So we live together. Yep. We watch football together. Yep. We talk about football together. Yep. Why don't we just start a podcast? Sounds like a plan to me. So Cam, today I wanted to talk to you about one of the greatest events that we've seen in the last few years. And in fact, this week marks the seven year anniversary mm. of what some would argue is the biggest comeback in Champions League history. Oh. And that's, of course, Barcelona 6, PSG 1. <sighs> the remontada. Wow. Man, before we even talk about the game, mm-hmm. do you remember where you were during that, during that game? I was in my roommate. You know what I mean? <laughs> now I was in my got room. got no cool story. Nah, no, no special story. It's just Barca and PSG, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? I have no attachments <laughs> to them. But now I was in my room, and I remember... You all, it kind of felt like it was just going to be, especially that PSG scored in that game as well. It felt like that game was over. And for that situation to happen was magical. But listen, you're more of a Barcelona guy than me. Mm. So I think you would have had a little bit more of a feel to it. Yeah. How did you feel when you were? I'll, I'll tell you where I was. This yeah. was the period where I was in uni. Yes. And in the US, games didn't air at 7, 8 p.m. like they do here. Obviously, the time difference means that Champions League starts at 2.45, 3 p.m. Mm-hmm. And I missed, I didn't miss any of these games. Trust me. Like I I made my schedule almost perfect so that United who were in the Europa League those days, Mm -hmm. Thursday I had off. I never had any classes on Thursday, but Champions League was always techie because I was basically in the back of my class with my laptop Mm. out. Sorry, dad. I know you're listening to this right now. I was just watching Champions League in the back. But basically the way this class worked was that the first half I was watching in class and the second half I had basically like 45 minutes before my next class, I had to find somewhere to watch Mm. it. The first 45 minutes, I watched it in a class. And I can't lie to you, bro. The way I was trying to cover my mouth, not to like <laughs> shout during the games. Because the first half, it was a blitz, basically. Mm-hmm. Like, Barca just came out on fire. And if you look at the lineup that they kind of put out, of course, they had the historic MSN. But it was unlike any Barca team we've ever really seen. They were playing 3-4-3. They had so many attacking players on the pitch. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's iconic because Enrique, before the game even started, I think he said... um. If PSG scored four goals, mm-hmm. Barcelona are capable of scoring six. Oof. And they went out with that mentality. But then uh, first half ends, halftime. And I think at that point it was 3-0, I want to say, or 2-0. It, Barca were kind of getting back into the game. But it was still a case of like, mm, mm-hmm. let, let's see, because their defense was so leaky those days. And the only place I could go for the next 45 minutes, because I had a class after that, I couldn't go back home. I was in the cafeteria and there was all this noise. I was trying to get food, balancing it on mm-hmm. my laptop while I was watching. It was a mess. And when the, the, the Cavani goal scored, I started closing my laptop. I was like, you know what? Let me go. Mm. Let me go. And the only reason I stayed in the cafeteria is because my friend came over to talk to me. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to him, talking to him, with an eye, half an eye on the other game. And then I think Barca scored the fourth. Mm. And at this point, there's about 10 minutes left in the game. They need three goals to go in. <laughs> Barca scored the fourth. I think it was a Neymar free kick. Mm. I'm still talking to my friend. I'm like, what? 4-1. Yeah, they still need yeah. two more. And there's like five minutes left in the game. And then I think Neymar scored a penalty. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I basically told my friend, I was like, hold on, I'm so sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. And then that free kick in the last moment, Mm -hmm. there must have been like 10 of us in in this US uh, cafeteria Mm -hmm. lounge that when Neymar spun Verratti Mm -hmm. and put that ball into the box for Sergio Roberto, 10 of us jumped up and just (laughs) screamed, bro. (laughs) It was one of those moments that I'll never forget where I was. And I don't think I'll ever witness a moment like that again. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, not even to glaze Barca here, but I don't know if there's many clubs on the planet that are capable of that kind of comeback mm. like that Barcelona team was. Like, If anyone was going to do that comeback, it was going to be Messi, Neymar, and Suarez. Mm. I mean, that game is attributed to Neymar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, yo, hold on. Nobody seems to talk about why didn't Messi take the penalty? Mm. Mm? Mm? Why didn't Messi take the penalty, because, bro? Because it was Neymar's question. time, man. I'm asking you a question. What? Why didn't oh, so Messi they, take now, the penalty, Now they don't bro. want Messi taking penalties. Oh. Bro, why didn't he take now it? Now they want Messi taking penalties. No, in the World Cup, he takes too many. Nah, in the nah, Champions League, was, not enough. <laughs> that was the moment where Neymar should have looked around him and said, you know what? I can make this my team. Hmm. You know what I mean? I can make this my team because he got given the responsibility of all the set pieces. Messi's the set piece taker more time. Neymar takes the free kick. Neymar was part of the play for the Sergio Roberto goal, of course. Neymar takes the set piece. And just his general performance was unbelievable. And if we're talking about one of the most legendary games of all time, Neymar's fingerprints is all over that. That's one of the greatest individual Champions League games ever from Neymar. Oh, 110%. And I think that's when Neymar really should have taken. Not over because Messi is timeless. That guy is ridiculous. He is Barcelona. He is Barcelona. But that's the moment where I just think 
Neymar's influence grew in the team. But, but grew, let me stop you there. Grew, let me grew. stop you there because I know what you're going to say. This should have been the moment where it became Neymar's team. Not I'm his a, team. No, just, but he became the e, guy. 1A, 1B. But this is why, where we disagree a lot. Because mm-hmm. I think that's actually the game, me personally, mm-hmm. that marked the day that Neymar in his head said, I'm leaving Barcelona. Nah, I'll tell no, you why. No, let me, let me land. Let me land. Let me land. Let me land. Because Neymar, we both agree, that was his game, bro. That yes. was literally... Like you said, Messi, you take the free kick, you take yeah. the penalty. Even the, the free kick at the end, mm-hmm. it's a filled free kick from Neymar in mm-hmm. the 94th minute or whatever mm-hmm. that he then gets the rebound. He was in control of everything yes. that game. Messi, of course, was Messi. But then you look at the closing moments of that game, the final whistle blows, and it's Messi being hoisted by the Barcelona players. It's Messi doing this to the fans. It's Messi in the newspapers. It's Messi completed the comeback. It's mm. not Neymar. And I believe that that was the day that Neymar looked at Barcelona and looked at Messi and said that as long as I'm at this club, mm. I can't be the best player in the world. And I'm not trying to say that's the only reason why he ended up leaving at the end of the season mm-hmm. to go to PSG. Of course, bro, the amount of money they threw him at. Yeah. But I think mentally, that moment right there is when Neymar clocked and almost clocked out of Barcelona mm. and said, I need to go somewhere else to write my own story. And for me, that's a massive disappointment. That's how I see it. It's a massive disappointment. You are a historic club, top two, top three, biggest club in football. And now probably top two, top three most um, written, story written club in football. You stay there, bro. You are the Brazilian prodigy. You are the next Pele. You are the next R9. This is where you belong, bro. He should have pushed it. You see when, I know it's messy. It's a different level. But you see when Mane and Salah were going at it like, I'm the best. No, I'm the best. I'm the best. That's what Neymar should have done at, 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 at Barcelona. Not go to PSG. Not go to Liga uh, and... Yes, we know his his he his level was still great there, but the story, the the man that he was, he should have been at Barcelona. The greatest players play for the greatest clubs, and that's why I'm disappointed. So I can understand what you're talking about. I remember that that picture that of, yeah, of yeah, Messi yeah. and stuff. I don't even remember Neymar pictures. That's, that's what I'm telling I mean, you. I get bro. you, but Neymar, Neymar had that one where he was like shirtless, he was just looking up the crowd, just like smiling. Yeah, at so yeah, yeah. Neymar should have taken over. He not taken over, but Neymar should have been his. Absolute running mate at that moment. And that's super disappointing because you look at that, Barcelona just started getting me, like pretty pretty mid after that. 17, 18, they were whatever. It's 18, 19. Uh, but to be fair, Cam, I let's, think let's if not Neymar forget, was at though, that, that team, season, they could have won more Champions Leagues. That season. That was the last. Messi never won a Champions League at Barcelona again. Well, he didn't win one since 14, 15. But Neymar, that se- you even talk about that Barca team, bro. There's a reason why it's the remontada, right? Let's mm-hmm. not forget that they lost the first leg four yes. 0 and let's not forget that the next le- the next game against Juventus, yeah. Juve ran them off the, the ran them off yeah. the park in, yeah, in, yeah. in the first leg. So that Barca team, I think, was actually already kind of on its mm-hmm. last legs. Uh, Enrique ended up leaving that season, and Valverde actually probably came in and gave a little oomph to Barcelona yeah. again. Neymar left, but like he made them more of a balanced unit. Mm-hmm. They won the league. They went to the Champions League semifinal two years in a row. At that moment, they had to start looking at Suarez like. Mm, that'll, that'll, that'll weigh your record in Champions League knockouts. They have to start looking at him like, yo, mm. we might have to cash in on you and yeah. run it with a Messi, Messi, Neymar, duopoly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, duo, sorry. So, look, I get what you're saying, but I don't want to sit here and make it out like Neymar's... Actually, it is disappointing. I'm going to be honest. It is disappointing for me. His level was great, but... Something, but are you more di- something hit different with well, let me Neymar ask you this, Kim, are you more di- Are you more disappointed that he went to PSG or are you more disappointed that he left Barca in general? both but i'm super disappointed that he went to psg super like high key undeniable i'm disappointed he went to psg Mm. that psg with all due respect yeah you see how mbappe is treating them you you are a stepping stone club when it comes to the the greatest level we saw it with um ronaldinho we saw it with zlatan went there on his end of his career you saw it with Mbappe using you as a stepping stone to go to Real Madrid. League R in general, Hazard. We've seen you come through there, tear it up, leave. Barcelona, Real Madrid, those are the standard. Those are the places where the best players are. And Neymar was there to leave. As I said, if he left and went to, I wouldn't have enjoyed it. But if he went to like a Man City where he's still was, winning oh, yeah, Champions Leagues, he's still winning Champions Leagues and stuff, the highest level Premier League. I would have been like, you know what? Cool. Because I think he can win a Ballon d'Or and stuff there. He was always handicapped for me going to to PSG. Always. Because uh, I hear that, right? Because for me, I definitely believe Neymar had to leave Barcelona. 
right? I, I think just in general, you talk about, oh, he could have been going back and forth with Messi. The best players of all time, mm -hmm. realistically, have never shared the stage with a guy that mm -hmm. was better than them or like even at the same level as them. Mm -hmm. It's never happened. Like, what? who can we even remember? In and, terms and the greatest of players of all time, who have they shared a stage of a player that was just... Maybe Zidane and R9, but mm -hmm. even them, like, they're not remembered for their time at Real Madrid mm -hmm. more than like their French uh, mm -hmm. history or their Brazil history. I think Neymar had to make that next step to a different club. Now, I can hear you saying PSG wasn't the club, but... Just think, and this is a hypothetical scenario here, if he had gone to Man City mm. under Pep and mm. he was the figurehead of that, but of that team, the, uh, or even a, a different team, if he had gone to, I don't know, uh, a Real, uh, not a Real Madrid, Real Madrid was obviously impossible, mm -hmm. but a Man United at mm. that point. Perez should have pulled it. What, Perez should have done what, it. Can you go 2.0? Should have done it. Ah, you're talking nonsense. He should have done it. He should have done it. You know, Bartomeu is already hated in Barcelona, right? If he <laughs> sold Neymar, to, he would have been shot in the street, To be bro. honest, look, even Man City, uh, it's just a, it was a tough situation for Neymar. And listen, this is why I'm saying, yeah, it was disappointing for him to leave. That's why I said, when you asked the question, I said both. Because the, dis the, the, the places you could have went after Barcelona was limited. PSG, obviously, are the only ones that can afford you. They popped your release because they gave your dad 40 million, whatever. But... Even even Neymar at a Man City. I'm sorry, with all due respect to Man City, Neymar might be bigger than your club at that point. Yeah, Neymar's fair. Neymar's bigger we're, than we're your club. We're talking about, what, Guardiola Neymar's was bigger big than their club too, and he ended up going there, Yeah, bro. yeah, and they're still trying to fight for that recognition. Do you know what I mean? So Neymar there. So Neymar uh, could no. Neymar, Neymar, would never have, Neymar would never have won in anyone's eyes. He would have been criticized no, everywhere he, he goes. he should have stayed at Barcelona. Oh, what? <laughs> Simple as that. Stay at Barcelona, bro, and make history. Be the most dominant duo we've ever seen. Do all these things. He should have stayed. He should have stayed. I'll never, ever, ever jump off this hill. Ever. And once Mbappe leaves PSG, you guys are going to realize how irrelevant Ligue 1 and, P and PSG are. <laughs> there you go. Make a lot of, a lot of enemies from <laughs> French football respect, fans. With all due respect. <laughs> He's called the Ligue Irrelevant. With all due respect. Nah, all due respect. Respect. Shout out Ligue 1, man. You know what I mean? Nah, it's not, I don't think it's not. the McDonald's Ligue 1. Yeah, 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 yeah. Moving on from Uber Eats. Shout they're they're them, specifying man. on restaurants. There we go. Restaurants <laughs> are great now. <laughs> Let's hmm. talk about though just the the rivalry in general, right? So that's that's focusing mostly on Neymar. I say rivalry. Let's let's focus mostly on comebacks. Yes, that is one of the greatest comebacks that we have ever seen. But where does it rank for you in terms of the greatest Champions League comebacks ever? Because we've had some big ones, man. Is it number one? Five. Five. Number five. Oh, no way. Number five. Can Remontada is number five. Number five. They were down 4-0, and they won 6-1. Nice. But what round was it in? The round of 16. Has to come with some tax. Has to come with some tax. Round of 16 is decent. You know what I mean? It's good. But for me, it's just not the... First of all, Barcelona shouldn't have even been in that position. So I got to take that into account. Yeah. You were the better team, bro. You're better than PSG. You, sh you have Messi. Yeah. You have Suarez. That team, you have that team was not that nice, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're I guessing that team like Mateo huh? in that, at the back. Uh, they had Umtiti, Mascherano. Yeah. And Listen, I don't think they didn't even win the league that year, bro. Didn't they? 16-17. Oh, yeah, 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 no, they didn't. Uh, Real Madrid won it. But at the same time, Barcelona shouldn't have been in that position. So I'm going to put it as five. Mm. You know what I'm going to say? I didn't really have no... Who you got above it, bro? Uh, do you want me to tell you I've got yeah. above it? So you want my order. All right, I've got... See, people might not be too aware of this, but the Deportivo versus AC Milan comeback. That's a good one. Deportivo were down in the first leg, 4-1. 4-1. Let me tell you who was on the score sheet for, for AC Milan. Shevchenko. Ballon d'Or winner. Kaká Brace. Ballon d'Or winner. And a PLO free kick. One of the greatest midfielders of all time. That's actually AC Milan at their apex. At their apex. They were the reigning champions. Yeah. They were the holders of the competition. And that's what Stan, Maldini, Cafu, Stan, Maldini, Nesta. Rui Costa, yeah. Dida. I can go on and on and on. Yeah, this is yeah. iconic. Hey, Dida, by the way. Yeah. I don't like how you threw yeah, Dida. But this is iconic. <laughs> My hot take is Dida's the most overrated football legend ever, bro. That guy was a scrub. <laughs> he was it was an iconic team. Then you have Ancelotti. You yeah. know what I'm trying to say? And then you have this Deportivo team. Deportivo La Coronia. Everyone, it's like a kind of a streets and never forget team. They go to the second leg at home. Deportivo were 4-1 down. First half at home now. 3-0 up. They flip it. They got Albert Luque, mm. Pandiani, mm. Valoron. These are real. Like, if you were there them yeah, time, yeah, they if were... If you know, you know. If you know, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they were a very good side, mm. um, Deportivo. So, yes, they were the underdogs because they're coming up against the reigning champions, but they were a very good side. And even when it got to 3-0, you're thinking in the second half, Okay, AC Milan, they're going to get a goal. They're Come on, one goal or two goals even. It's going to be a close game. 
people need to go back and watch it. Mm. Deportivo was so calm. You would think they're playing against Chivu. <laughs> they were comfortable. And to rub it in, <laughs> to rub it in, they got the four. Mm. Four Dagger. nil yeah. wipeout. Dagger. And that is the AC Milan team that, as I said, were reigning champions and went to the Champions League final the next season. This was an elite side. So for me, that's why. Because of the underdog aspect, that's why I have it above the Roma. You got them at number four. I've got them at number four. Let me tell you who I got at number five, first of all. Mm -hmm. Number five, I have Ajax versus Spurs. Mm. I'll tell you why that, that comeback was crazy, right? This was the Ajax team that in Europe were on some crazy fairy tale run. Who was their manager again? I forgot actually. <laughs> I forgot his name. <laughs> Heisenberg. Walter White was their manager. <laughs> now Eric Tanag. This was Eric Tanag really when his stocks were at its absolute maximum, mm -hmm. and he had that team of Frankie De Jong, Matthias De Ligt, uh, Van, uh, Van de Beek. Yeah. They like obviously you look at the names now yeah. and see what they've kind of gone on to do at their new clubs. Ziyech as well. Tadic. They haven't. They haven't. Yeah, Tadic. They haven't really lived up to the hype that they had at that team. But at this point. This was the hottest young team in Europe. So they were in a group of Bayern. Mm -hmm. They advanced out of it. The next round, they play Real Madrid. In the first leg, they actually lose. Mm. And this was the Real Madrid team that had just won three in a row. And of course, they don't have Ronaldo or Zidane anymore, but it's still Real Madrid. Mm. Real Madrid at the Bernabeu, who haven't lost a knockout game in so long. Mm. They go to that ground and basically put on a footballing masterclass. Mm -hmm. School Real Madrid. I think it was 4-1 at the Bernabeu. Mm. Tadic has one of the only 10 out of 10 ratings from the keep in history. Mm. They then go against Juventus. Cristiano Ronaldo's Juventus knock them out as well too. And then in the semifinals, they are schooling Spurs. First leg, uh, they won 1-0 at uh, Spurs' ground. Second leg, they're up 2-0. Hakim Ziyech puts them up 3-0 on aggregate with this crazy whipped ball acro across goal. Puts mm -hmm. them up 3-0. And we're thinking, Ajax, man. Wow. Already we were thinking the night before, Barca had just lost yeah. to, uh, Liverpool. But Ajax are going to go play Liverpool. And then... This is what I call the biggest I'm him moment <laughs> from the least I'm him player of all time. <laughs> Lucas Mora, out of any player on the planet who's basically taken Harry Kane's spot on the 11 because mm -hmm. he's been injured, comes up with a, a performance that, look, it's not Messi, it's not Ronaldo, it's not even Benzema. Lucas Mora mm. bangs in a hat trick in the last 15 minutes. Insane. And the last one is just a dagger of all daggers. Mm -hmm. You see the, the IX players just falling to their Forward, knees, yeah. knocks them out. Sends them to the final against Liverpool. And you know the damning thing about all of it? Mm -hmm. Lucas Moore doesn't even play in the final. Harry Kane comes back. Pochettino but you talk about comebacks, bro. 3-0 down at their ground mm -hmm. against the team that's basically on red-hot form yeah. to do that. Yeah. Crazy comeback. Insane. So what was your number four? My number four is actually from that same season. And mm -hmm. I think you could argue we say this is the greatest Champions League campaign mm -hmm. of all time. 18-19. Cristiano Ronaldo Ooh. for... Juventus. Greatest Champions League campaign. I'll tell you why. Because you had United versus PSG. You had Barca versus... Oh, Champions versus... League season. Yeah, campaign. Oh, I yeah. thought you meant individual. Nah, Ronaldo. this is the greatest okay. yeah, Champions okay. League yeah, campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ronaldo has just joined Juventus. And they're up against Atletico Madrid. A foe that he knows all too well, right? Mm. Like he's, he's given Diego Simeone and Diego Godin nightmares mm -hmm. for the next 15 years, right? But the first leg, it's actually Atletico Madrid who take a 2-0 lead. And Godin scores in the last minute. And I think... He actually scores off a defensive lapse of judgment from Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. And all of the Atletico Madrid fans are jeering Ronaldo. Simi uh, Simeone, I think he does that. He does like, yeah, that. He basically does that to the to the, the fans and stuff like that. They're jeering Ronaldo. They're saying, what is it? Donde esta Ronaldo? Mm -hmm. They're saying, go home, Ronaldo. And Ronaldo, at the end of the game, while he's walking past the journalist, he goes, what does he do? I think he goes like that. Five. Yeah, me five, you. them zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's basically taunting Atletico mm -hmm. Madrid. And people are saying, nah, this ain't around Madrid anymore, man. Yeah. This is a different Ronaldo. It's a different time. Atletico, hey, we got, you had the last five years. Yeah. We got the next <laughs> five years. But bro, Cristiano Ronaldo, like he does as the owner of this competition, mm -hmm. comes up with another virtuoso performance in the knockout rounds. And it's just so scripted, man. Mm. Honestly, the minute the first one went in, you just knew how the shit was going to end. Yeah. It's that header at the back post that he did, yeah. He just dunked. That Who was is, it that he dunked yeah, over, bro? Was it Godin? Was it Godin? I, no, I think I it might have been, been Juan Fran. I can't yeah, lie. Bro, it was such a, like, like, I'm going to will this team yeah. to victory. It was, a, yeah, it was like that. And in the way that he ended it as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, he does that himself. Bro, it's just like... What a way, It's the man. history of Cristiano Ronaldo in the yeah. Champions League, man. So that comeback was... That's he has a, he has a few, to be honest. Like, Wolfsburg, we didn't even speak about that. Yeah. But that's the one that sticks out to me the most. That's a good one. My next one, I have at number three. Mm. Hmm. I think I might change it. Hmm. I got to win the United fans over. Yeah. <laughs> at number three, yeah. I'm going to go for Liverpool versus Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now, again, I got, I always, I got to speak about like the players that were on the pitch. Okay, Suarez and that weren't at their, maybe their best anymore, but you got Suarez, you got Messi, you got still Jordi Alba, all these type of players that were at Barcelona. And they put on that, like, this is the R- Liverpool team that, us in the Prem are waxing lyrical about, oh my days, look how unbeatable this Liverpool team are. They go to the Camp Nou, link, link Big Boss Messi, oh and he puts them to the but you, know, you know, actually, that game, yeah. Liverpool weren't that bad. But they, they, were, they weren't that bad, but Messi just like schooled them, bro. An uh, elite free kick, <laughs> iconic free kick as well. So you're looking at that, and then I remember when that happened, there was so much, look at Prem fans. Prem fans have been talking about <laughs> <laughs> Prem fans, Prem fans, Prem fans. Because Messi just, hey, listen, yeah. people are bringing up Messi's top six record. Oh, mm. it's better than some guys that played in the, the whole country, whatever. And then we all remember now it beca- it looks like such a uh, iconic moment in a way or such a defining moment when they're through. Messi puts through Dembele. Oh, my God. And then Dembele is fraffing around like he's done his whole career. Did you see Did you see how Messi falls yeah, to Yeah, Messi after falls to the floor. Like, what? The, did he, yeah. he did like a little front flip or something. <laughs> a little... Oh, no, I think that's Roman the one where Poli he just fell something. backwards, I oh, swear. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they go through... I mean, so obviously, you're thinking at that time, look, it's 3-0. It's and not, don't forget this. Happen. Salah got injured in that This game. is what I'm about to say. So now you're going into the next one. Salah's wearing some John Cena top that says never, <laughs> never give up. Blacked out, never give up. Hoodie on. He's not playing. There's somebody else missing. Firmino was missing as well. I'm yeah. talking about you are missing two of the trio that are one of the defining trios of the Premier League era. So you just got Mane out there. You got Origi and you got Shakiri. Yeah, Shakiri. Yep. And here's another thing too. Vinaldum didn't start that game. Mm-hmm. I think instead he went for uh, Ox. Did he go for Oxlade Chamberlain? He went for Henderson for sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, Fabinho. 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 And I think he might have gone with Oxlade Chamberlain. Milner. That's Milner. who it was. Wow. He went with those three, and Vinaldum was furious on the bench. There we go. And and then you look at the game, right? Even and do you know what? I'm not gonna lie. I had to go back and watch this game the other day. Barcelona had. Bare chances, bro. But I did not realize. I like when I was looking back. At, I thought, but I thought it was just an oblit, a, a obliteration no, by by Messi by. Messi sent Coutinho and Suarez yes. through on goal. Messi bro. also had a chance too. Messi also had a chance we, in that bro. game too. That if it was Getafe at home, <laughs> he would have buried. So let's not get that wrong. But 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 Liverpool. That was like Anfield at its at its apex, at its pinnacle. Like you're looking at Origi scores. I think the opener. Then you've got two goals by Ginny. The, by the way, the header was am- amazing. Yeah, yeah, that was a madness. But I'm telling right? you, Vinaldum on the bench. Mm-hmm. He actually came out recently and said that he was so angry he got mm-hmm. dropped that he ignored Klopp's tactical instructions. Wow. He went out there and just said, "I'm doing whatever I want." My own <laughs> thing. And listen, I respect it. Sometimes <laughs> players got to grab the. That is the definition of grabbing the game by the scruff of the neck, and then of course, corner taken quickly. All right. <laughs> corner taken quickly that might be the one of the sole moments of pure football genius i've ever seen bro by yeah. trent i was like oh, oh, oh. origi like huh that's that's What's that's, this? that's the definition What's of a this? dagger too bro. boom and it puts in the back oh right, listen the barcelona players absolutely sunk they crumbled and one thing that we heard afterwards is even at half time there's there's clips forget dead about silence no forget about heard there's a documentary about mm-hmm. that game or about that season or whatever. Jordi Alba was crying in the in the in the Listen dressing room at halftime. At half-time. He was crying at halftime. Yeah. They knew what was coming. He was shook. Yeah, they 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 knew what was coming. And <laughs> corner taken quickly is obviously yeah. it's it's actually a, that's a mouthful to say. So I don't yeah, know how yeah, it became yeah. coined. But anyway, yeah, yeah. corner taken quickly is now an absolutely legendary moment. So fair play to Liverpool. I think that comeback has to go in the top three. Like Barcelona. Yeah. It's not a small team, you know, Liverpool. So and for them to go on and win it as well, mm-hmm. legendary. I have at number three, 
game that we probably share, but in different places. I have uh, Man United versus Bayern in the Champions mm. League final. I got him at two. Yeah, and he wanted to, to yeah. appease our fan base. I got, I got him at two. <laughs> I got him at two. Because for me, I have Roman Tata at two. Oh. I actually forgot to put Liverpool Bar- Barca. I'm so sorry. Damn. <laughs> they, they, they'd be in my top five. Mm-hmm. I completely forgot about them. Um, Man United versus Bayern. Mm. We've had this... Uh, to be honest, that, that season was a, a season of comebacks for Man United. Mm-hmm. In the FA Cup, uh, obviously what they did against um, Arsenal. In the league, I think the last day of the season, they had to come back to mm-hmm. win. And then in the final... Never has a treble been done in the modern-day Champions mm-hmm. League. Man United are aiming to be the first, create history. But that game, bro, I feel like everything that they did throughout that season almost like went out the window. And Bayern were just cooking, bro. Yeah. They were just cooking. They get an early lead off a free kick. They're, they're getting their chances. They're going through on goal, and they just can't finish off Man United. When you talk about never say die, that United team just mm-hmm. didn't know how to say die. And also what made that United team so special was the, the strength and depth that they had. Already they were missing uh, Roy Scholes, Keane and Keane. Paul Scholes. Yeah. David Beckham is playing in, in central mm-hmm. midfield. I think what, Nicky Butt. They had Nicky Butt, yeah. yeah. Phil but Neville was out there. What made that team so great as well, too, is the striking options that they had. Mm-hmm. Dwight York and Andy Cole, maybe the most feared strike partnership in Europe at the time, they're taken off. Mm-hmm. On comes Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer and Teddy Sheringham. In the last minutes of the game, <sighs> the first corner, <sighs> Sheringham. Second corner of the game. Oh, the first corner. Don't forget, too. Peter Schmeichel comes up yes, for the that's corner. What, that's why I did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter Schmeichel tried the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes running back. I think second one, he didn't come up yeah. for it. Beckham. The Sheringham. And Solskjaer has won it. <laughs> Two goals right at the depth. Ooh. Bayern Munich players fall to their, uh, fall to their to knees. Kafor. Kafor. Kafour's reaction mm. when that second goal went yeah, bro, in. Bro, you thought your family member died. Bro, honestly, I don't. I ain't seen him since. I've never seen him since. That was at the end of his career or something. Because, bro, he he looked heartbroken. What a moment! What a mo- and it, do you know what makes this comeback so good? It's how it was. Bro. It was boom. We scored. Boom. We scored again. Like it's it's and over. We were, we were out the it's game over. the entirety of the game. They bro. hit the crossbar. Bro, they the they should have. That game should have been dead and buried. <laughs> Like, nah, that, that is... game, if you want to talk about a game that summarizes Sir Alex Ferguson's Man United tenure yes. in terms of like instilling this, you never know when you're beat. Yep. Fergie time, mm-hmm. last minute winners. That's the game, bro. What that's a... the game to mark history. What a moment. Honestly, ah, legendary. The man. greatest night in Man United history. Yes. Definitely. And, and I don't think it will ever, ever. be topped. Ever, bro. How can you top that? Yeah, I mean, we're still Maybe talking about the, against Liverpool we're still talking <laughs> the night in Paris under Oli. <laughs> <laughs> don't kill me so that's what that's why i have at number three yes. i had the remontada at number two mm-hmm. i'm sure you have the united game at number two. i have united at number two so that probably means that we have a common number one yeah man, it's got to be istanbul liverpool versus ac milan again when we're talking about things that you just didn't expect to see guys i just need people to go back and look at the lineups hold on that, that milan team then they got two teams on this list on the back of com- bottle of, bottle gene Bottle Jean. That's back-to-back seasons they did it. Do we need to start looking back at the Milan team? Mm. With, mm. How many league titles did that team win? Mm. Interesting. Ancelotti. Hmm. Interesting. But anyway, that team, that team, if you look at the AC Milan lineup, and you look at the Liverpool lineup, just on paper, you would say, did these guys win a charity match? To <laughs> did, they get, did they win a lottery yeah, to get yeah. here or something? Yeah. Or a raffle to get into this final? First and foremost. So when they go 3-0 down, listen, in a final, going 3-0 down is shocking, regardless of who you are. So go 3-0 down, you're thinking, wow, because at least you always knew. And yeah, it may have been the kind of start of it again in this new era, but you always knew that Liverpool had heritage in in Europe. You know what I mean? So to be 3-0 down, you're like, this is a madness. Mm. But you genuinely, and Carragher says it himself, you genuinely went in at halftime. I remember where I was, I was at my family member's house, and I was like, it could be 6-0. We were all thinking this could be six. Like, what? Crespo, mm. Kaka, Pirlo, Sheva. This is this could be uh, this could be rugby score lines. Nice. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, they come out in the second half. They made a change. Gerard goes off to the right. Haman comes on. Mm. Little bit of solidity. You wouldn't think, listen, it's not a master stroke. You just let's just damage limitation. I think even Carragher, he said. First of all, I think mm-hmm. Carragher said. That they actually didn't let Benitez into the dressing room for the first yeah. like, five or so minutes or whatever. Yeah. Just because they had to talk within themselves. Yeah. And then Benitez comes in. He's like, okay, we're going to do this, this, mm-hmm. this. Carragher says, like, none of us were like, what the, what the hell is this guy talking about? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just damage limitation, yeah. bro. Just keep the score at 3 0. Yeah. And then they come out. 
Obviously, the Gerard gets the header from what, what a header. What is, what's that Clive Tildy co uh, commentary, by the way? He's like, oh, hello. Hello. Yeah. hello. <laughs> yeah. And then Gerard's doing this, doing this. And you're just thinking his armband is on yeah. this. You're thinking, yeah, yeah. passion match. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> let, let it go. But then all of a sudden, Schmitzer, boom, pops gets up. A, pops up. So, listen to the name I just said. Yeah. Schmitzer yeah. on a pitch with Gattuso. <laughs> anyway. Schmitzer gets his goal. He's like, ah, little passion. Then again, out of nowhere, Steven Gerrard. Now, that was a dive, right? <laughs> but you got to do what you got to do. I respect it, Stevie. You got to do what you got to do. Wins the penalty. And Xabi Alonso misses yeah. the penalty and scores the rebound. Is but that, is that, what, well, Xabi Alonso had never taken a penalty before that moment. Why the hell did he take that penalty? Gerard, mm, what are you made yeah. out of, mate? What are you made out <laughs> we'll of? let it slip because he had yeah. a great game, but damn. But then, so Jeez. Gerard took the penalty. Um, no, sorry, Alonso took the penalty. Obviously, then they equalized a 3 3. But even after that, what people don't realize is Ace Man still should have went on and won that game. Yeah. Ace Man had chances. Shev Shevchenko oh, was bottling for Is it better fun. save or a bitter miss? It's a big miss, bro. It's a big That's miss. a it's miss, a bro. Miss. Yeah, I don't care what miss. anyone tries it's gassing up about Jersey Dudek. How can Shevchenko not score yeah, from this? It's a big miss. They they should have won the game. They should. Yeah, yeah. It, it's quite similar to Man United's one. Yeah. It should have been lights out, but then obviously it goes to the penalty shoot. And I think now, penalties. I think it was. I think even Milan players knew at that point. It's oh, it's fake. They, they've crumbled. Yeah, they've, they've, they've crumbled. Look yeah. at the way she, Shevchenko. For people that don't know, he was the reigning Ballon d'Or winner at that point. Yeah. He had was he the Ballon d'Or winner? Yeah, yes, before. he was the Ballon d'Or winner at that point. He walked up to that penalty. New, his legs looked like noodles, mate. It looked like spaghetti. He couldn't stand straight. He couldn't look and do, do that. An and you know, he had actually scored the winning penalty two years ago against yes. Juventus. This was like a, the best day. finisher in, in the world of football became like yeah. scooped out by Jersey Dudek's wobbling yeah, very legs. Very similar to uh, Baggio um, yeah. in, the, in, the, in yeah, Italy. Yeah. But then, so he bottled that one. And then obviously, looking back at it now, you look at that way Dudek was coming off his line. Bro. I know out, Liverpool fans me. are going to be talking about like, oh, mm -hmm. this is how the rules were. Yeah, back it was. It was. Dudek was dead ass in front of Andrea Pirlo. Bro, when he he, he was on the penalty spot. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the penalty Bro, spot. Bro, that was boogie as well. But honestly, in terms of comebacks, like 3-0 down to that great Milan team in a final, that my top two are finals. Mm. In a final, to do that, when you had no right to really even be on the pitch with them. Yeah. You think back at the Gerard moment against Olympiacos, the bit of fortune with the ghost goal, it was just written for Liverpool in that moment. So listen, amazing. And the fact that we speak about these finals, you know, when you speak about a final, you say, oh, um, this game, Ajax versus Spurs, da, da, da. You just have to say the location. Yeah, yeah, that night Istanbul. in Istanbul. <laughs> That's what you have to say. That night Istanbul. in Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. And you just know what you're talking about. Iconic, legendary. Mm. Hey man, those are some great, great comebacks, bro. But so I think that's gonna do it for this week. Mm -hmm. Um, some good topics, man. Let's yeah. see. Hopefully, you have a good game between Liverpool versus City. Hopefully, we're entertained as <laughs> I say we're neutrals. But mm -hmm. <laughs> is it possible for both teams to lose? And yeah, we talked about some of the biggest comebacks in Champions League history mm -hmm. as the competition returns this week. But guys, don't forget as well too. This podcast is powered by Bleach Report. Mm -hmm. Shout out to them. Shout yes. out to everything they're doing for us. Check out the clips as well. That can be check out the out clips on, them, on all of their platforms. Yeah. And guys, comments below. Yes, yes. What do we title this damn thing, man? Because yes. we can't go another week without uh, mm -hmm. without a title. And while you're down there, leave us suggestions for what we should talk about. Yes. What are your greatest moments in Champions League history? Biggest comebacks? Like, share, subscribe, share with all your friends, and we'll see you next week. Peace.